Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Adrodals Blitz, and in today's video, I thought I would make a video on some tips and tricks on how to become a pro at World of Tanks Blitz. As you can see, today, for example, I played 20 battles, went 80% win rate, and 3,787 damage. And just to make sure there was a wide variety and diversity of tanks here, I played some premiums like the Super Conk, E6, Chieftain Mark VI, Caro Combatimento, 5A, and the AMX M4, but I I also managed to sprinkle in about half tech tree tanks like the TVP, Type 71, T110E5, 57 Evy, uh, AMX 50B, Mao 60 TP, and the VK72. All of these tanks are very different and super skill intensive in each and own ways. So hopefully I can help explain what goes through my mind as I play some of these tanks. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. First thing I gotta do is bring up Blitz and swap my tab. Yeet, there you go. Now we are on World of Tanks Blitz. I'm gonna pull out a fairly generic tank just so that we can use this as an example. I'm not gonna pull out a premium, something on the tech tree. Um, I've done the E5. I did a video on that not too long ago. How about the STB1? Before entering battle with whatever tank you want to play, the first thing you want to do is understand what that vehicle is good at. For example, the STB is great at gun depression. It's got decent DPM, but not more than all the other mediums. So if you're up against a vehicle like a T-62A or a Kampf Panzer 50 ton or really anything that has an autoloader or more DPM than you, you have to be careful and know if they're going to outreload you or not. You also want to know how effective your armor is in certain positions you put it against. For example, if I'm in an STB, TV, hold down against a 183. Yeah, I'm going to be very cautious because I know that the 183 can shoot me for a thousand health. If I'm hold down against an enemy STB, I'm not going to be nearly as worried. That's obviously common sense, but it's some things that you might overlook in the actual battlefield. So, here we are. We are on Mayan Ruins. Now, the first thing I'm going to do anytime I play a vehicle like the STB that's hauled down is find a good haul down position to play. I see the enemy team has two STBs, and I would expect both of them to go towards C to work that spot. I don't want to deal with them because that's a pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a smarter, more common collected route, which is up to the bridge this way. We can already see one of the STBs is there. We've spotted the Vicar's Light. And with that, now we are on the bridge, which is a very, very good position. We tried to slap a shell into the Vickers. Unfortunately, we were not able to. And, well, our mediums are not doing all too great, but we do got the Fosh out in the open. Nice shot into his lower plate. Thank you. You can see we're just chilling here, not making any over-aggressions, not trying to bleed any health yet. Obviously, the Vickers is a tank that I'm going to have to keep an eye on. And there you go. Nice slap into the turret cheek. Also got to keep an eye on this STB. You obviously always want to make sure that all of your surroundings are covered like that STB who almost got shot because he wasn't looking in front of him. So the Vickers Light pushes up. Honestly, I'm probably not. Ooh, actually I actually was able to get a shell and I'm a little surprised. At this point, you can see how my team has supported me and we are going to be able to take over this part of the map. Yag does bounce me, but I expected that. He hit me in the turret as it is. This tank is just low enough down on this crossing here that you shouldn't have to worry. And at this point, now I can just kind of chill here. This is what you do in the STB. You make sure that all of the corners that people can push you are locked and then you take advantage of its strengths. Now, as I said, the STB's armor is very good, but a Yag can definitely make quick advantage of just hatching me, I guess. That guy slapped me right in the hatch. Our 268 is in a, in a bit of a troublesome situation. There you go. Made the Yag miss his shot, which is pretty nice. And we also got the AMX 50B out in the open. Who? There you go. Nice slap into the track wheel. I see my Fosh needs help. So obviously I'm going to divert attention away from the position that doesn't need my help right now and try and help out over here. Get a nice shot into the enemy Fosh. My, uh, ooh, yeah, there you go. Nice bounce from the enemy STB. Now we're going to get another slap into the Fosh. Unfortunately, you can see I actually managed to get a heat shell into my upper plate, which is very hard to do, but not impossible, as you can see. The STB is the biggest threat right now for me. The 268 doesn't have enough gun depression to work this ridgeline. Neither does the Fosh. So I'm going to make sure that I focus the biggest threat, which is the enemy STB-1. My teammate finishes him off. Now I see this 268 is going to try and drive over. So I'm going to get a nice shell in. I was trying to go for his track wheel, but as you can see, it doesn't matter all too much as the 268 has put himself in an absolutely awful position. We get a nice shell into the 268, and with that, he is the only player left, and he gets cleared by the FE2 and 5B183. Now that was a very very crazy game. And there was a lot of things going on. And obviously you have to come up with those decisions split second. Every second you spend thinking and wasting time is time that you're not doing your job. 
So to do a quick recap on that battle, I'm just going to go on the replay, showcase what happened, why I did that, and hopefully this helps you understand everything that kind of goes through my mind. So let's get right into the action. The first thing I did in this battle was I obviously, as I said, I did not want to fight the STBs. I did not want to fight the Vicar's Light. Putting yourself in this spot over here is decent, and it definitely can work very well. But there's a couple problems with this spot that I personally have for a vehicle going up against two enemy STBs. First of all, I know they have a lot of aggressive tank destroyers, the Fosh, the 268. I don't want to put myself in a position where if my team doesn't spot, a tank could just YOLO around this corner and absolutely bedonker me. When it's a lot safer to put myself on this bridge where I went, and then I can choose to help my teammates here just by pushing over here, using my gun depression to shoot down, or choosing to help out my team on this side of the map as well. You can do that, and that's what's great about this bridge is it offers so much flexibility. Now, if I'm in a, if I'm in a much more mobile tank like a Vickers Light, maybe I'll go the other way because I can trust my mobility enough to cross. But that's the first thing, is looking at the lineup and deciding where you're going to go from that. Now, obviously, this shot was a bit lucky on the enemy Fosh. You're not always going to be able to get shots off like that onto the enemy opponents, but you miss every shot you don't take. At this time right now, I'm just holding. I'm making sure that I'm shooting the enemy mediums. I can't hit the STB at that current position, so the Vickers Light is the only player I'm able to actually see. I'm going to aim it on the STB. Obviously, that misses. But right now, the whole goal is to make sure that the heavy tanks behind here, the Jagdpanzer 100, or if any heavies tried to push up, which we did see the 50B later, pushing into this bridge spot allows you to be able to hold the enemy heavies that do try to push up. I'm also able to completely halt this STB and Vickers Light right now. So I'm basically stopping a majority of the enemy team from being able to do anything at this point. And now that they've backed off, the Vickers Light, STB, and Jag are all backed off towards this position, it allows me to just kind of push them back hold them at this spot, and this is what I'm going to do. Now, to be fair, I could have been moving back and forth, and this Yag probably wouldn't have hatched me, so that was on me. It didn't really matter too much, though, as we're still getting some very, very nasty shells into his tank. Shoot as his hatch misses. Makes sense. Now, at this point in time, we see the 50B and the Yag off over here. I know I can get a free shell into the Yag, and I also see that my team is still holding on behind me. So I'm going to get a shell into the 50B, make sure he gets pushed off so my team on that side doesn't have a problem. And now you divert your attention to the part of the map that needs the most help. So obviously, this part of the map is in dire, dire trouble. So I'm going to get a nice shot into the Fosh. Obviously back up before he can get a shell into me. Make sure the STB can't hit me. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to all orifices in the battle. Now that was a bit on me. I definitely knew that that Fosh was going to reload very quickly because he has a two shell gun. But at the same time, it was a bit unfortunate that he did pen me in the upper plate there. But either way, you'll notice how out of the three tanks I have the option of shooting at, I'm going to go for the STB. Specifically because the STB-1 is the only tank that has enough gun depression to shoot me haul down. The Object 268 will not be able to shoot me unless it drives all the way over the ridge. And by the time it does that, it it's not too much of a threat. The object 268 doesn't worry me at all, even if it does kill me. The fact that I'm able to get rid of that STV, which is the biggest threat to me at that time, is the way it should be done. So that was a 4,632 damage game. A very easy game at that to showcase how you take advantage of the situations you're put in. You think, what are you going to be your hardest opponent you're going to fight? For me, it was the Vickers Light and the STB ones. Because of that, I knew that I didn't want to put myself in a direct contact position against them. So I went on the bridge where I didn't have to directly fight them. I could have left if I needed to, if my medium flank fell apart, which was entirely possible. But thankfully, my team helped me out, and we were able to come out with a victory. Overall, it's very, very easy to take advantage of a situation put in front of you as long as you notice what is going on. You have to constantly go back and forth thinking about what are the biggest threats. That Yag was not a big threat for my team, but it could have been if it was able to push up. Because I was able to hold that Yag at bay, because I was able to hold that 50B at bay, and then I was able to also stop the enemy tank destroyers and mediums from pushing up, I essentially just pushed them off from doing really anything aggressive to my team. And that's really all you need to be able to do. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, let me know. I know this is kind of a weird one and I don't do a lot of videos like this, but I feel like this could be something useful. Maybe in the future I'll do it with a heavy or something like that, but let me know. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.